What's up guys? So tonight we're going to do something that I haven't done in a long time and that's light painting at night time for car photography. So I'm going to show you guys how I shoot it. I just got a new tool that's going to be um, really helpful and way better than the stuff that I've used before. And I'm going to show you how I edit my photos in Lightroom. So let's get right into it. So I've made it here to the first spot that I'm going to try out tonight. Uh, it's pretty cool, there's like sort of a orange glow coming down from this industrial sort of window, I don't know. But I think it looks quite cool so I'm trying to go, I'm going to make that orange uh, red and then I'm going to have some blue light painting around it or maybe red light painting and just do it like just black and white with just red. Um, but we'll see how it goes, we'll get the equipment set up and then I'll show you guys how I do it. Alright, so what you're going to need if you're doing some light painting is a light bar or some sort of LED video light. So this is a um, the uh, Yongnuo YN360. And you're also going to need a tripod of course, because we're doing long exposure. We'll probably be doing between 5 and 20, 30 seconds maybe even. So you definitely need a tripod. And then obviously you're going to need your camera and a lens. I currently have a 24 to 70 on here. I usually do car photography between, unless I'm doing rolling shots, between 50 and 75 mils. Um, that way you get the car nice and compressed. If it's too wide, it kind of distorts the car. So if you can, you want to definitely stay higher than 24 mil. The most natural looking images are usually between 50 mil and up. So 50, 70, 85 is like a really, really nice range. And this lens goes down to 2.8, but usually that doesn't leave the whole car in focus. So I'm probably going to be shooting about 4 or 5.6 aperture tonight. And also, um, if you don't have one of these for your tripod, I really recommend getting one. This is an L bracket, so it goes onto your camera like that. If you want to switch from vertical landscape to portrait to landscape, it takes two seconds. You don't have to fuck with the tripod because tripods are just awful for maneuvering around usually. So one of these is like $5 on Amazon. Get yourself one of these and you'll thank me later. So I've got my framing composed here, as you can see it's quite cool, we've got the light coming out of this window here and that's pretty much the only light source, there's not really any street lights pointing at my car. Um, one thing that you got to remember for night photography, especially if you're light painting, is to set your white balance, uh, don't leave it on auto because as soon as you start adding colour to the image it's going to change the white balance to for every image and you're going to have to manually correct those in post because we're probably going to be blending multiple images while we edit these. Another thing to remember, especially if you're shooting on Sony, is not to use um, like super flat log profiles at night because I actually only just learned this myself. Um, when you shoot a really flat profile at night, it just adds heaps of noise to the image. And basically, yeah, you get a brighter image and you get, you know, less contrast, which is technically better for editing. But when you do it at night, it's just trying to bring detail out of the shadows that is not even there. Your camera can't even get it. Recently, filming at nighttime and taking photos. I've stopped using S-Log, completely stopped using any kind of um, like super flat log. I shoot an S-Log too during the daytime because it's super flat and you can just edit it the fuck out of it. But um, yeah, nighttime it's better to just have that contrast in camera. There's not as much flexibility in post but it honestly just looks so much better. Like it just looks cleaner. If you're ever um, editing nighttime footage or photos and you're wondering just why the noise won't go away and there's weird color artifacts and stuff like that probably because your color profile is too flat or you're not exposing your image properly. But anyway, uh, I got the framing all set up, white balance is set, settings are set and what I'm going to do now is set the camera to a 10 second timer and so that means that I'm going to press the button and then I'm going to walk away and 10 seconds later it's going to uh, take an image and I'm going to just move the light stick around and just play around with it for like 5 or 10 minutes and see what I can get. I should probably mention as well right now that um, because we're doing light painting and we want a longer exposure because I'm going to be walking around the car with the stick we're going to need a long shutter, I'm going to be able to have to go around the whole car so my current settings are ISO 100, aperture 5.6 and 6 seconds exposure I 
All right, so I think that went really well for like um, just a random little first time. Um, I've done it before, but not with a black car. Uh, I did it on my old MX-5, which is white. And when you put color onto a white car or any color car really, it holds that color, but obviously black doesn't, you know, it doesn't really take on any color. So I couldn't really light paint the car per se. It's more just some cool effects in the background, but we got some really cool um, patterns and stuff as, you, as you'll see. I put the, the raw photos up on the screen. I'm gonna have, go have a quick look at another spot, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be closed. If it is, we'll just jump straight back to the room and get these photos edited. All right, so we're back home now. It's the next day. Um, the, I tried to go and check out a second spot, but it wasn't open. So we're gonna check the pictures into Lightroom and see how they turned out. All right, so we've got our images into Lightroom now, and these actually turned out really cool. So this is, you can actually ignore these. You can delete these. Those are from when I was testing the white balance settings. So here is our picture, just straight out of camera. White balance is set. There's no light painting on it and we're just testing for exposure. There's our second image. There's a third one that I tried to do with white and it turned out pretty trippy. And then there's one that is really close to the camera with the blue light. I think that could be quite cool. We could possibly mask out um, some of that around the car. And then some more blue ones. That was quite cool. Quite like that one as well. And then there's some more red ones. I really like that one actually, that's really cool. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit one of these just to um, sort of get the, the tones that we'd like. So I'm gonna bring up the shadows. I wanna remain, I wanna keep this image quite dark. So I'm gonna bring down the blacks. Raise the shadows up a little bit, get a bit more, a bit more out of it. And then I want it to look very dark and moody and nighttime. So, let's see, we'll tip the clarity up a little bit. But with the colors here, I wanna keep red as red. I'm gonna change the orange, make it a bit more red. And then, the, like the yellow is a bit more red as well. Not much green in the image, so we'll keep that there. I quite like this, it's sort of a, um, kind of a scary nighttime vibe right now. So you can see already from the initial photo there. So this is quite a sort of unrealistic looking um, dark moody image and I quite like that. Uh, split toning is something that I've been working a lot more on recently so you can see you can create, make the highlights and how I'm um, seeing, you can see like it's not doing anything now but if you hold down alt or option and then you use a slider it shows you the maximum saturation for that. So I hold it down and when I see sort of like a vibe that I quite like, then I, that's how I know how to choose that color. So because we're going for that sort of scary red, I'm actually gonna go all the way to red and bring that up. And then for the shadows, I'm probably gonna use a blue. Well, even that is quite cool, but I'm gonna go sort of like mid dark blue and then bring those up. That's quite cool. This is what I envisioned when I was shooting the image, just black, blue, and red, not really any other colors. That's why we changed the hue of the colors to be mostly red and blue. And then in the split toning, we brought that out as well. So split toning is um, just a huge, um, it just increases the, the feel and the vibe of your photos a lot more. So if you, didn't, if you don't add any split toning or you don't play around with the HSL too much, your image is gonna look very natural. And that works a lot of the time. Like sometimes I don't muck around with them that much at all. If you wanna sort of give your photos a unique look and a unique style and if you're thinking of a certain vibe for your photos, then yeah, learning split toning and HSL is a huge component. So all of my car photos, I set the sharpening down because Lightroom sets it to 50 or 25 by default. We're gonna need a little bit of noise reduction here as it was a long exposure. So we can zoom in here, see how much noise we have. Not much at all, so yeah, I'll just give it like 20-ish. Chromatic aberrations, profile corrections, and then down here, calibration is super important as well. So as we're going for that really red and blue vibe, this can work in our favor as well. So as you can see, you can make all the, oh, I'm kind of liking that that orange look now. No, 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 we'll keep it, we'll keep it red. But I think it was, I was make it a little bit more orange. I think it was too, the red was a bit too purpley before. You can also just increase, this is because it increases the saturation of the reds and the oranges, that was quite nice. 
and then that'll that'll really shake things up if you start doing too much of that. But that looks quite cool. Do that a little bit, and then yeah, we'll give the blue a bit more saturation as well. So play around, um, you know, when you're learning Lightroom, it's really just playing around with everything. I've been playing around with Lightroom for like pretty sure over five or six years now. And you know, like literally just go in and click every button, try every setting, that's how you learn. I just learned by fucking around, doing like thousands of awful edits and making things look crazy. And then eventually over time you balance out, you figure out what ratios are good and what colors work together, all that kind of stuff. And then just watch YouTube videos. Like I'm gonna do more editing videos, but just search like how to edit car photography. And there's so many, uh, so many videos out there. But yeah, I'm really liking how this is looking from that raw image, quite flat, low saturation, to this one here. And I'm really excited to see how the, uh, bring a bit more clarity into the image. Really excited to see how the, um, the light painting goes with this as well. So for all my car images, like I said before, I leave the sharpening off for the background. And this is how you make it the car as a subject stand out more as well. So we've just got a little bit of clarity sharpness to 100 and a little bit of tiny bit of noise as well and that's just to balance out the noisy areas like if you're sharpening shadows too much and then that's just on a brush so we just go over the car with this brush and that just makes it so the background and the foreground stay soft and not sharpened and we're just sharpening the car so yeah I just had that as a preset called car sharp a little bit of clarity uh, 100 sharpness and then when we export it we just export for I actually quite like, I was, I was thinking I don't like the graffiti when I was shooting it. Um, I couldn't go any further down because there were some trees blocking it, but now that I, it kind of adds to it, it's, it's, it's nice. I quite like it. So now that we've got our colors sorted for that one clip, we're going to click Command A or Control A. I'm on a Mac, I don't know what the fuck you do for Windows anymore. And then click Sync. Because it's on a tripod and every shot is the exact same angle, like you know, we can just sync everything. So I'm just going to go check all. Since every image is exactly the same, we can just click sync all and then synchronize. So now we've got all of our light painting shots here, and that looks wicked. Wow, that's cool. Oh, I like that. Very trippy. Very trippy. I really like that one, I think that's my favourite. Either that one, or this one. Also, I wouldn't usually shoot um, a portrait photo for the purpose, like, if this is a, a client photo shoot, I wouldn't be taking portraits, I'd be taking landscapes and crop them later. Um, but this was just a quick test for Instagram. So we got a crop for 4x5, which is the best crop ratio for Instagram. If you're posting a portrait photo, which you should be because this takes up the most amount of screen that you can. So we'll center the car in this. In fact, we're going to need to change these, uh, I need to make these walls a bit straight again. So I'm just using the guided uh, transform tools here to make that stand up straight again. There we go, that's much better. Cool. In fact, that's looking quite awkward just there, so I'm just going to bring that in and bring this one in a little bit. There we go. That's looking really good. Much better when it's a bit straighter as well. Cool, so now if we zoom in, our car's looking pretty sharp. Sweet. And then uh, I usually do this for my car photos as well, just cleans it up a bit. Um, remove the waff and any other stickers from the windows. Um, just makes the whole car a bit cleaner. And also, my indicator um, cover down here is off getting smoked, so I'm going to remove that as well just because it looks a bit funny. And how I do that is just grab the, um, the healing brush tool in Lightroom and come in here, grab that, grab that. But yeah, there we go. That's looking really cool. I'm really happy with that turned out. So then we're just going to export that. And I'll show you guys my export settings as well. So I usually have just JPEG, 72 resolution, sharpen for screen, high. Don't limit your file size. You want to upload the maximum file size you can to Instagram because it's going to fuck it up anyway. So you want to upload the biggest photo you can. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions about any editing or wanted to see any certain kinds of edits in future videos, uh, let me know down below. But yeah, if you enjoyed, subscribe and I'll see you next time.